And Fabiha Brihan is a psychotherapist and a psychoanalyst who's based in Toronto and is also a doctor of philosophy. And his forthcoming book, which I really look forward to, is entitled Finding Winnicott, Philosophical Encounters with a Psychoanalytic. And it's coming out in March by Radlitch. <laughs> um, well, first of all, thank you all for being here. And thank you, Lana, for inviting me to present in this forum again. Um, um, some of you may remember um, me delivering a much earlier version of this uh, of this paper back in Paris in 2017. Um, I hope that what I'm presenting today will be um, richer, more subtle, perhaps hopefully more intelligent even. Um, it is based on a chapter from the Finding One O'Clock book that's coming out in, in, a, in a couple of weeks. I have, um, I have slides, I have a presentation uh, prepared. Um, some of the content may be unsettling to 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 uh, some of you. I will flag it just before um, it shows up, and I will also let you know when um, we're done with it, so that if you wish to, you know, adjust your glance or your video, please do so. So here we go. Much has been said of the the painful leisure designed to serve pleasure and foster experimentation, of the sadism justified by principle or whim, of the brutality held in check by adulthood or civilization. As much has been said of the cruelty enacted by ordinary people under extraordinary circumstances. In this last context, while supposedly showing how certain situations move one to become brutal or abusive, Milgram and Zimbardo's now infamous mid 20th century experiments speak pervasively and persuasively of cruelty in the language of a science that can only address the phenomenon's how, but never truly its why. Both scenar scenarios treat cruelty in situational terms and reinforce the bias that assailant and victim share alike in an injustice perpetrated by some external agency, be it a malevolent political or a misguided scientist. The irony here is that such experiments are indeed experiments, i.e. make belief scenarios that mimic reality while differentiating themselves from it. As their participants play at being interrogators or prison wardens, their make belief slides into the suspension of disbelief as experiment and experimental help experimenter help produce a character that captures all too well the cruelty at the essence of the human. Much remains to be said of this cruelty, not only as an unmediated and gratuitous infliction of pain beyond the limit of what reason or common sense can conceive, but as a foundational component to exciting precarious play of a cruelty whose effect is a fear that hardly ever speaks. While it may have often indulged in a penchant for a triangulation, psychoanalysis submits much of its concern to a foundational logic of the in-between. While the discipline's topography is invariably of three simultaneous, though distinct domains, each with its own set of rules and investments, psychoanalysis remains a sustained appreciation for an intervention in the interregnum between the contradictory first and third, requiring and required by both, partaking of both in terms of materials and dynamics, although belonging to neither. This is true enough of drive, dream, transference, and construction, the, the four, or at least what I consider to be the four polyvalent pillars of psychoanalysis, so much so that it would be legitimate to qualify the discipline itself as a theory and a clinic of the interregnum. Freud stripped the humors and souls of whatever ontological and therapeutic privilege they had enjoyed in previous centuries. The drive he advanced lies on the frontier between the mental and the somatic. It brings together a representing mind and a working body. Without it, the mind knows nothing of lack, fantasy, or difference, and the body is incapable of anything beyond need or survival. Freud did not explicitly identify the frontier as a central motif in his understanding of the drive till the mid-1910s. Nevertheless, he had been quite taken with the concept from his earliest days. 
Consider, for instance, the essence of a dream as it resides in the distortions it performs as a consequence of its connection with both reality as stimulus and or daily residue and the unconscious as wish. The dream is the Zwischenreich, a term Freud used in a letter to Fleece that references less an intermediary kingdom and more the interkingdom, the interregnum, as mechanism of wish fulfillment nestled in between primordial hallucination and frustrating reality. 